John, look, thank you very much for coming to chat with me today. We're here to chat about your film, uh, The Drop, and it just screened there last week at the Mind Rights Film Festival in Lisbon. Mm -hmm. um, can we just start, can you tell me what was the inspiration for the film? The film itself came about as a final project for a master's degree at McGee. Um, it spun off the theme of it. Uh, I wanted to make a film about mental health and that came about from my experience being a musician and working on the Six Strings and Stigma album. The album itself came about as a charity album. 14 people with long-term mental health difficulties locally told their stories, gave it to 14 local bands and songwriters and we wrote a, a song each and recorded it for charity. And all the proceeds of that went to the Beacon Centre and all the stories were just so inspiring. I mean, my song, One Silver Line, the story that inspired that was, was incredible. And I thought, if I want to make a film, uh, everything I've done up until now has been still photography and design and all of that. And I thought, pull that together with the music and, and make a film. So it was just a natural progression. Uh, the story itself came about sort of cherry picked, if you like, um, from people's real life experiences both on the Six Strings album and through family, friends, people I know, personal experience, all of that kind of combined into this, this melting pot and then we created a, an original piece of drama, an original piece of fiction based on that. So it's meant to be realistic but it's it's not a not a real story per se, just a believable work of fiction was what we were aiming for. So that's kind of where, where it came about. Um, we shot it, it was scripted, storyboarded, all of that as, as part of the course and filmed over the last year basically. Uh, yeah, so finished up about round about May, got the thing done and dusted, edited and released and then it, since then it's been doing the tour of the, the festivals, going around the yeah. festival circuit so it's been doing really well, delighted. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, how many festivals has it been around so far? It's been shown, um, we missed a couple of deadlines through no fault of our own just yeah. because of Twist of Fate, they, they had closed by the time distribution came around. So it's it's been shown in the Northern Ireland Mental Health Film Festival. It was due for a screening at the Foil Film Festival uh, and it's been at Mind Rights Film Festival in Lisbon and Portugal. Uh, we're only back from that there, myself and my brother, the assistant director, Matt, who helped me out loads during the process with casting and he's, he's had a long acting career himself and it was brilliant help with the casting, the sound, all of that so it was, was fantastic. But the two of us went over to the festival, met a lot of other directors, had a brilliant reaction for the film and lots of interested parties from all over the world coming up to us after and speaking about how they were really interested in the themes of the film and getting it shown elsewhere. So already offers on the table for screenings in, in Montreal and South, Af South, where South Africa, Montreal, London, uh, Paris, all this sort of stuff coming out. So we'll see where that leads us, you know. Fantastic. Mm. Um, when will you know back uh, from those like Well, we're, we're, we're all in touch now. All of the, the directors that were at the, the festival, um, some brilliant directors producing some great work on very similar themes as well, um, all to do with, with mental health but different aspects of it, like some were about eating disorders, some were about you know, OCD, uh, ours was about kind of mental health suicide awareness kind of things, so, um, but all of those directors are now, we're now in touch, it's like a wee network, you know, so, um, and people that is sort of interested professors and all of that so you know we'll see we'll see what comes of it but everyone's now in a sort of a, a group email sort of thing talking about right what's the next so Fantastic. watch so this space <laughs> yeah so yeah. very international now yeah it yeah it'll, a anything that does happen will be up on the the website the drop the so thank you very much so that'll be up there watch watch that space for the next i'll i'll mm. be watching it with eager anticipation you see <laughs> uh just go on the subject of the movie as well like and you were saying about uh you know you made it while you were doing your master's course yeah. that was your final year project and you know looking at the credits list on it you've 
almost, you know, well, not even almost, you, you have authored it, you've yeah. wrote it, directed it, produced it, uh, edited it. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's a lot of work for one man to do in his own. Of, a lot of work, a lot of work. But it was a joy to be able to, to do that. Um, I did the, the master's course over two years, part time, just merely because of my lecturing at, yeah. at the Northwest Regional College and some other places. It was it was basically looking at getting the time to do it and I didn't have a full year full time to do that. So I did it two years part time, which was a brilliant way to do it, simply because the first year got a lot of the ticky box stuff done, you know, your entrepreneurship and all that sort of stuff that, that I did in the first year, which was great, it was fine, and I got it out of the way. So the second year was a bit more free. Um, I had my supervisors and colleagues basically saying, look, what would you like to do? You know, let's do something cool with this year. Mm. So from the very start, I said, right, want to make a film, short film. They were like, what's the theme? I said, Six Strings and Stigma just had been released really successfully, and I said, I've written a song about this, but I want to make a film about this as well. So off we went, and and that was it. So within a year from yeah from September right through to May June time was the the kind of timeway timeline for writing it, scripting it, storyboarding it, casting it, um, rehearsing it, shooting it, editing and releasing it. So it was quite a full fun. slate. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite a full time. I wouldn't do it again in a hurry, but yeah, yeah, yeah it was great. It was it was really good learning experience. And then over the summer modules then was distribution, getting it out to festivals, looking at the website, doing all of that. So it was very very yeah. intense year but really worthwhile and particularly if you're getting you know, international festivals looking at your film as a significant piece of work, raising awareness on, on mental health. That's that's really key for me. Yeah. Um, just the other night, in fact, in the Nerve Centre, we um, had a screening with Beacon, the Beacon Centre, who actually initiated the whole Six Strings and Stigma project. It was Ray O'Doherty that created that whole project that sparked this onto this onto this. And uh, they did a screening of Drop just the other night on um, Tuesday night and it was fantastic great reaction from people who suffer from mental health uh, issues throughout their life from service users professionals all of that brilliant feedback from it so it's it's class to see you know it really is it's fantastic uh, it's amazing and uh, watching the trailer for the film it's a really effective trailer but one of the things I noticed was uh, the music is so atmospheric and just works so well the trailer and it's am I right saying it's Glenn Rosper uh, it is. that has done the song? It is, it is. Again with that link with the Six Strings project um, both Glenn and I tutored with the, the Nerve Centre courses and he it was recorded in the Nerve Centre and so when I was saying to Glenn about I just said to him look we're doing this project now, do you want to work on a film soundtrack? Um, the two of us got together, we were working on kind of cinematic orchestration kind of pieces and some things were working, some things weren't, but there wasn't just that, that right feeling for the climax of the film. Uh, so we went back and I listened to the Six Strings album and it just clicked with me. I said, Glenn's already written the song, That's that's already, it's already on the album, it's a great tie-in with the album and I asked him could he use that and he was like yeah surely absolutely so um, he used his contribution for the, the climax of the film and our song One Silver Line at the end for the credits so it was just a nice way to, to tie it in and in fact Roy Arbuckle who was also involved in that project did the voiceover for the film so mm -hmm. it was just those, those links that keeping those kind of cross disciplinary you know between the music and the film and the photography and the art and everything kind of kept together you know so a real collaboration just a between real collaboration. everyone involved in, in fact every every actor in the film was a drama student from McGee um, bar Jeff Koch at the end who's the the older narrator uh, for the where it blends at the end but every spoken part and most of the the acting parts it was all students at the mm. you know it was it was amazing. It was it shot with no budget. Um, just if I may interject, yeah. just on that with yeah. with no budget. I mean, watching the trailer, it's very clear this is, you know, this is a story set in Derry and it's mm -hmm. been filmed in locations around 
the yeah. town I mean especially with with no budget like how did you find that like did you any problems getting locations was there any problems when you were actually out filming on location it, we had um, an amazing amount of, of goodwill behind us um, I mean McGee obviously had had no problem with us using there um, but the like of the inner city trust and Cafe Del Mondo and things w up at the Craft Village they let us use their space no problem at all um, and that was great for some of the outdoor scenes a lot of it was shot in my own flat as well and so it's just if, if you have no budget behind it I, I, I enjoyed the challenge of it um, you know because it kept it simple and it made you think about each shot and, and really work with, with what you have um, the actors were all great they were all behind it they were all behind the, the theme of the film and when they got the script they were all really keen on it, you know. So I saw them in, in auditions and explained to them, we don't have a budget for this, so it's it's not gonna be a big you know, big payday for you. Yeah. But they were so happy to have it on their acting C V and going forward it's it's a really strong piece for them as well, you know, to go on to other courses or get work, get further work. Yeah. So. Um just on that again, I mean, you know, a lot of filmmakers, you know, uh big budget filmmakers now they all say that the lack of budget is actually a better thing it actually forces them to be yeah, more creative it does, I mean it like does, yeah. it does yeah you would say that on, on that side of it it just forces your hand you know it just it just makes you as I say it makes you more it makes every shot more important because you you can't just go oh yeah throw another couple of hundred quid at that shot and hope it works you know you can't get lazy with it you have to actually kind of graft for each shot um, I've got a few scenes in the film running through my head, even as examples. But like walking along the quay, um, where where Jack's starting to unravel, and that's towards the the climax of the film. I mean, we were out on a really stormy night, miserable day, and Joe, the the main actor, was uh, was amazing, just really dedicated and fought his way through the rain for like six, seven, eight takes, running along the quay. You know, so so it was class. You know, it it forces you to be to be kind of innovative with your shots and forces you to say, right, we have to have to push through this, you know. There's no one standing beside him with a an umbrella and a flask of tea. <laughs> you know, he just has to go and and I think it made it made for a more believable performance, I think, you know, as well. So great. Mm -hmm. So listen, John, thank you very much again. Final question. Um, now that you've done drop and it's it's obviously getting a lot of international interest. Uh, have you any projects in mind? Like, are you anything you're working on now, or anything you've in mind for the near future? Yeah, yeah, we're working on a couple of projects at the minute. Um, one of them is actually it's it's back to a, a musical link. Um, just with the band, we're actually talking about for the for the next album, making a series of videos, like a but a, a kind of a narrative album, if you like. So it's, uh, that's going to be a big, big challenge. We don't know how how that's going to happen yet at all, if if at all. Um, we're also working, I'm working on a couple of sort of short documentaries at the minute as well. Uh, one of which is about the, the festival experience, the, the actual experience of watching this film grow, you know, because uh, now, it's, now it's an entity, now it's a, it's a thing, it's out there. It's out there and for everyone to yeah, see and take it. Yeah, and I mean, you've got so many people from so many avenues talking about it and asking about it and looking for... What's that like for you as a filmmaker? I mean, taking it from this idea surreal. that you had, and now it's out there, and everyone can it's watch it. And I, I have to say, it, it's it's a very, it's it's a wonderful, rewarding, fantastic thing, but really surreal when you're getting calls from, you know, the Samaritans saying, yeah, yeah, can we, you know, look, we're thinking we've got this wee program, maybe we could edge that in there, and uh, people from a mental health organization background saying look can we use this in our education programs or use it to to talk to people to offer people support um, film festivals general general film festivals saying look we would like to show this to a general audience and you know they things like that it's just it's just one of those things it's it's out there now it's it's in the ether so you never know where it'll go and it's it's really interesting just trying to follow that and, and see where it leads Great. Well, John, thank you very much. I mean, thanks, Amelia. I wish you nothing but the best for the movie, and I can. I'll be very much looking forward to your next projects. Thank you very much. Cheers.